So Google has released a fast mode for VO3. And uh, you know what? I'm just going to let the Yeti tell you. I can't believe it. VO3's fast mode is finally here. It's so good and it costs less. This is amazing. So the question, of course, is does this break the rule of fast, cheap, and good, but you can only pick two? So today we'll dive in for an A-B comparison, plus go over the cost of fast mode, which I, th I think you're going to be pleased with. Plus, I've got an interesting VO3 prompt formula and one really big hack that you're definitely going to want to know. So yeah, without much fanfare and sort of ironically after Google released the VO3 API, well, just about everywhere, uh, they stealth dropped a fast mode. I will say that there's not much you know, technical information out there available on it right now, but I can tell you that uh, it does generate audio and I mean, it does so as the name implies quickly. But the real seller here is of course the cost. And we are gonna take a look at that in just a second. But first let's see if it's worth your time. This morning I did crib up an ode to well, one of my favorite TV shows, Twin Peaks. Uh, let's see how Fast Mode does. This town has its secrets, Agent. But things like this don't happen here. I found the body. It was wrapped in plastic. You see, this town, it's not like other places. The owls aren't what they seem. And the coffee? Well, it's got secrets, too. It is a damn fine cup of joe. You're looking in all the wrong places, Agent. You need to be in the woods, talking to the owls. There's a cabin out there, a black lodge. Never go in it, promise me. You're gonna wanna see what's on this, Agent. It's creepy. Well, I think I've just solved the case. Do you have any chewing gum? So yeah, that is pretty good. Uh, to note, all of the clips there were generated in VO3 fast, although I did take it through a Topaz upscale. Uh, that's just kind of par for the course. So now let's take an AB look at fast mode versus, well, they call it quality. I just call it the big daddy mode. So kicking off with this Fallout inspired prompt, uh, let's take a look at VO3 Big Daddy. Overall, pretty solid output. There is a bit of a stutter step on our, our female character here, or maybe she just tripped on a vine. Uh, to note, I did also prompt for dialogue here. We did not get dialogue. I'd say there's like, it's usually around like a 25% chance of failure on dialogue when you prompt for it in VO3. At least that's what I've been noticing. And then, you know, like a 25% chance you might get subtitles as well. Now taking a look at the exact same prompt run in VO3 fast. And I, I think you're gonna be kind of surprised by this. We need to be careful in here. Could be bandits or worse. Always is. Keep your eyes open. Aside from the obvious thing, which we did get our dialogue this time around, the other sort of really surprising thing was that uh, like these two characters across both VO3 quality and VO3 fast, I mean, they remain pretty consistent down to the fact that both characters have the same vault numbers. That was something I did not prompt for. Ultimately, I do think the fast model is just the normal model, albeit without like one or two final rendering passes. In terms of prompt accuracy, I mean, the, the fast mode does get in pretty much everything that we ask for from the normal version. Uh, take, for example, this Bond-inspired output. A little something extra for your wrist, Bond, if you need to make a quick exit. And if I don't? So obviously quality does look pretty good, although we did get the subtitles there and it did miss out on the punchline. Here it is in fast. A little something extra for your wrist, Bond, if you need to make a quick exit. And if I don't? then you've simply got excellent taste in timepieces. Dry British humor from Q, gotta love that guy. So beyond the subtitles and the, well, the stepped on joke in the quality mode, actually, I just, overall, I just kind of prefer the turbo output here, uh, just in terms of framing camera movement and the fact that our bond there kind of looks a little bit more on the Michael Fassbender side. My initial thoughts while testing out VO3 fast was that, you know, since it retains so much of the prompt coherence, uh, that it would make for a really good sketch pad to test out your prompts before bumping them up to, you know, VO3 Big Daddy. That said, as I continue to AB again with the same prompts, I tended to start gravitating towards the fast outputs. I uh, take, for example, this kind of Game of Thrones inspired scene. The scouts confirm it, your grace. The frost giants press further south than ever before. This changes everything. Don't let that guy write titles for my thumbnails. Okay, let's go check it out in uh, well quality mode. The scouts confirm it, your grace. 
The frost giants press further south than ever before. This changes everything. Obviously, in the quality version, we are getting a lot more texture. Uh, the faces aren't quite as like smudgy as they are in the fast mode. Um, but, you know, again, in the uh, quality mode, we do get that cut when it comes to our like King's line there. Um, and I, I don't like that as much. We can, of course, play the old re-roll game, and in this case, we we got the shot that I was looking for, uh, albeit everybody kind of turned into Unreal Engine-type characters. Uh, and then, you know, doing so, obviously, on the more expensive VO version, well, that's going to cost you. So the plus side, and to note, the fast version is currently only available on the Flow platform. I haven't seen it released via API just quite yet, but the cost here is only 20 credits per generation meaning that you get up to 625 outputs uh, if you use the VO3 fast mode, as opposed to the uh, 125 per month that you get with the VO3 quality output. It's a, it's a pretty big jump. Ultimately, without that fast mode, there's no way that I would have been able to pull off, you know, that Twin Peaks short that we saw at the beginning of this video. Uh, that, I guess, in terms of total generations, uh, to pull that off, it was some, uh, we're somewhere in the neighborhood of about, I would say like 103, Granted, this was all text to video, so we would run into our standard text to video problems like uh, consistent characters and just, you know, just general wonkiness in terms of prompting. And as I always say, there is no right or wrong way to prompt. Although I do have something pretty interesting coming up on that. Uh, for our Twin Peaks short, I did keep things very minimal and simple. Uh, the framework here was nothing more than a dramatic scene from a 1990s television show about a surreal Pacific Northwest town where a murder has taken place and then followed by a quirky, handsome uh, FBI agent and then kind of whatever was happening afterwards. That said, one of the more interesting text prompt formats that I've run across recently, uh, I believe from Tacala, was uh, utilizing JSON to prompt. If you're not aware, JSON is JavaScript object notation, uh, basically a standard text-based format for representing structured data. Now, obviously, I do not expect you to write all of that out. That is, of course, where an LLM comes into play. We're going to talk about that in one second. But uh, first, let's take a look at a JSON output. So yes, you are still likely to end up with wonky, weird outputs, but I do think that the format is interesting when you are trying to aim for something very specific. So what I've done is created instructions for a GPT or a gem or you know whatever other LLM that you're using that you can plug in uh, to create your own version of this. The instructions here will allow you to be as loose or as tight as you want in terms of your shot description or upload an image and it will not only provide you with a text prompt but the JSON output as well. So you can experiment back and forth to see you know which one you're getting a better result from. Uh, in the case of actually this one, the result came out pretty good. And again, I didn't actually provide it with any details about what I wanted to have happen in that video. Uh, I just gave it the image and said, make something. As always, the PDF instructions are available over on Gumroad. The link for that is down below. It is 100% totally free, though if you would like to leave a donation, it is always appreciated. Another interesting VO3 finding, this one coming from Martin Nibelung. Uh, this one only works in the VO3 quality mode, but if you upload an image frame of a character against a green screen um, and then give it the prompt instantly jump slash cut on frame one, two, and then whatever you want, uh, you'll actually retain the details of that character. Uh, here, let's check it out. This is actually Martin's character example here. Yeah, that is pretty much that character. Now it is sans sound because once again, with VO3, at least currently when you go image to video, you don't really get sound or dialogue testing it out on my own with this like older noir detective, uh, we ended up with this, which, yeah, I mean, that is definitely him. Now there are some decoherence and issues, especially with our femme fatale in the cigarette, who I guess is also a magician, but for sure that is our guy. Now I have found that it probably is better to generate with Flow VO3's internal image generator. Uh, for example, when I tried to take this mid-journey image of a uh, Viking, we ended up with this as a video result. Anna! 
where oddly we did end up with some sound effects that happens from time to time, um, where overall we do end up with the character. It's just that the colors and just overall video quality look a little bit um, on the on the mushy side, I'll say. Now, I do want to stress this is still pretty experimental and you know at 200 credits per generation, you might not want to play with it too much considering that you could end up with results like this, which is you know obviously just a still image with uh, you know a slight zoom in. But I'll keep messing with it and I'll let you know once it's somewhat dialed in. This might serve as a good stopgap uh, until we get the VO3 references feature. Finally, rounding out with some kit bashing experimentation utilizing Luma's new modify feature. Uh, I covered that in our last video. Link to that will be down below if you need to get caught up. So uh, starting with this, uh, this was an early test shot for our Twin Peaks thing. We're chasing a ghost agent. There's no other explanation for it. A murdering spirit, Sheriff. Intriguing. Then utilizing Mid Journey's retexture, all of which was detailed in the Luma video, uh, we ended up with this first frame. And then utilizing Luma's modify feature uh, set to a very low level, we end up with this. We're chasing a ghost agent. There's no other explanation for it. A murdering spirit, Sheriff. Intriguing. I'll keep playing around with this. There is definitely something here. Uh, plus there is the fact that you can upscale to 4K uh, in Luma. I wouldn't necessarily call this completely dialed in, but there is definitely something there. Overall, I am definitely pretty happy that VO3 now has a fast mode that is pretty good. In my opinion, it is definitely much better than the VO2 fast model that was released that everybody was complaining about being nerfed. I mean, it really was. Although that said, you can still use the VO2 fast uh, mode for 10 credits now if you want to. But overall, it does feel like Google has heard our complaints about the cost and, you know, is doing something about it. So, you know, kudos to them. I will, of course, be keeping a very close eye on the latest happenings with VO3, and I will let you know as soon as they drop. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.